he's three minutes late. He should have let me know he was going to be late. And I just let him knock and I called another guy up. I'm on the phone with the other guy while the uh, med school guy is knocking on my door. A friend. For some reason, if you don't look like me, I don't take the relationship serious as it could be something real. I don't know why I was just stuck on, I'm only supposed to be with someone who looks like me. So I should just wait. So Brad was a man of his word. He came and it was kind of like a difficult way to put the uh, alternator in. He had to take the wheel off and get under the car for a stranger he doesn't even know, never even met before. But the first time we're ever meeting in life, we didn't go on a date. Hi, I'm Nettie. Nettie, that's me. And I'm back for another video. Please like, thumbs up, and subscribe if you would like. So yeah, your girl just got her hair done, so I had to come back and show you it while it's still fresh. So anyway, I'm going to tell you this uh, story that I thought of because I'm starting to think I might be the problem, but we'll figure it out together. Because there, like, now that I think about it, there are times that I think I might have met some really nice guys and I fucked it up. And I'm going to explain why. So the first story, this happened back in like 2013 when I was living in Houston, Texas. So um, back then I was just on every dating website possible. I was there. And um, the day came when I was having car trouble. But me just moving to Houston, I don't really know anybody like that. I'm not really making all that much money to pay all these bills and then a car issue. So on one of the websites, it was like called datehookup.com. Don't go there, don't go there. So on datehookup.com, I mentioned something in the news feed about having car trouble, um, not knowing what the issue might be. Now everybody was coming, giving their own diagnosis of what they think it is. And this one guy, we'll call him Brad. <laughs> Brad, um, he slid into the DMs to ask me questions about my car and what my issues will be. And um, I explained it to him and he told me what he thought it might be, like the alternator. I had um, an old Mercury Sable back in the day. And he told me it sounds like it's the alternator. And Brad told me that if I can just purchase the alternator that he'll fix it for me. And I'm like, fix it for me. Like, how much are you charging or what do you what do you want? What do you need fix it for me? And he said, I can just fix it for you. No charge. I'm like, what do you mean no charge? Like, what are you expecting afterwards? He said, I'm not expecting anything. I just want to do it. I like fixing cards. So I took Brad at his word. We didn't exchange numbers. We just stayed in contact online. And I went and purchased the alternator. And I told Brad, hey, I got the alternator. If you're still willing to come uh, put it in my car. And Brad said, uh, yeah, let me know when you're free. And I told Brad when I was free. And uh, he said he would rather do it in the morning before the sun really came out bright and it got too hot out there. And I said, cool. So Brad was a man of his word. He came. And it was kind of like a difficult way to put the uh, alternator in. He had to take the wheel off and get under the car for a stranger he doesn't even know, never even met before. But the first time we're ever meeting in life, we didn't go on a date. We didn't even talk on the phone. We just text back and forth online. I told him my problem. Brad came. He went under my car and he started uh, fixing it. But when he was fixing it, a couple of hours went by and it was getting hot. So he texts asking, asking us if it's okay, if he can come back the next day and finish. It's getting a little hot outside. And I said, sure. Again, Brad was a man of his word. He left, he came back the next morning and he finished my car a few hours later. He was a nice, respectful gentleman. When he was done, he was just done. It wasn't anything extra of let me come in, come, let me, go cook for me, uh, you owe me something now, or none of that. He just fixed it and he left. Brad tried to keep in contact 
to maybe we could like hang out sometime, like go on an official date because we didn't even know each other. We never even went on an official date. He just came to fix my car for me and he left and my car was running just fine after he fixed it. But I didn't really look at Brad that way. And I think it's, I just put him in the friend zone, even though he went out of his way for two days straight for a total stranger to fix my car. I put him in the friend zone and I'm going to tell you why. For some reason, I never really looked at Brad's as someone I'm going to be with and get married and be my husband. I always looked at someone that like someone who looked like me as someone that I would be with and get married with and have children. So even if I did talk to Brad or someone else like that, it was just kind of a placeholder situation. I never really looked at them as someone that we're going to be together, get married and have kids. So in my mind, I'm just like, thanks buddy. Thanks friend for coming to fix my car. But I never looked at Brad as he is a really nice guy. This could potentially be an amazing boyfriend, fiance, future husband. So I fucked it up with Brad because I didn't really reply to his messages that much anymore. Just, hey friend, how you doing? He would want to hang out. And I didn't really want to hang out with him that much because I just didn't look at him as someone that could be a potential. So that's where my mind was back then. Of Even if I did talk to someone else. It was just kind of a placeholder situation. I didn't really like them. I had it in my head that I was only focused on something else. So I really missed out with a decent guy who was friendly, a man of his word, um, takes care of business, didn't even fucking know me, and didn't even act funny after he fixed the car. He did what he said he was going to do and he went his way. All he wanted was just to see me again and hang out. Let me take you out. Are you hungry? Uh, let's go to dinner or something. So I actually met a few brats like that that were really nice to me, really respectful, but I didn't look at them as a viable candidate to be with because my mind was stuck on being loyal and sticking to someone who looks like me. That actually happened a lot now that I think about it because the person didn't look like me I didn't really look at them as something real so they were just there just to be there while I was waiting on someone else to come around because uh maybe a year or two later car problems again I'm still in Houston it's like 2014 2015 I go online, make a comment to see who's going to like say something about my car. I'm like, yeah, my car is doing this. What do you guys think it is? And another guy reaches out to me. This is like a couple of years later after Brad. We'll call him Carlos in Houston, Texas. So Carlos, um, he was nice. I didn't know him like that. It was the same situation with Brad. Carlos reached out. We talked about my car. He came over to look at it. He told me he had an uncle that owns um, a shop and he can probably help me out, give me a discount or something to get it fixed. Um, and Carlos was like, look, um, do you need help with anything? You need to get somewhere since your car's down? And I told him, yeah, I need to go grocery shopping. Carlos, who did not know me, never met me a day in his life until he came to look at my car, said, all right, I got to uh, get to work. But after work, um, maybe tomorrow I can take you to go grocery shopping. I said, thanks, Carlos. The next day, Carlos came like he said he was going to come. And Car <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> Carlos picked me up. And we uh, went to the grocery store, total strangers, and we just walked around talking in the grocery store like we were a couple. And I'm buying groceries. I'm picking out the groceries. We're pushing a cart together, walking and talking. He's helping me get the groceries in his car. And he's driving me back to my home. Carlos was really sweet, respectful, nice, and friendly. But again, he didn't look like me. So I... 
I was just looking at him as a friend. For some reason, if you don't look like me, I don't take the relationship serious as it could be something real. I don't know why I was just stuck on, I'm only supposed to be with someone who looks like me. So I should just wait, wait for someone who looks like me to treat me like how Carlos and Brad treats me. So just wait, 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 wait. So Carlos took me home. He brought my groceries up to my front door. He didn't try to come in. He didn't try to touch on me or say anything inappropriate. And he gave me a hug. He said, let me know if you need anything else. And that was it. And Carlos gave me the information to his uncle. He let his uncle know who I was if I wanted to get a discount to get my car fixed. And he still, like Brad, tried to keep in contact. I did not really keep in contact with him that much. I just... I didn't because, again, I had it in my head that maybe he's just a friend. I didn't look at Carlos the same way I didn't look at Brad as someone that could be a really good guy for my life that maybe he can go further to where maybe this is the person for me because they did not look like me. So, yeah, I have so many stories of where I missed out on a really good guy solely because he did not look like me and I had it embedded in my head that I was supposed to be with someone who looked like me. But now I realize, like who likes you? There are some amazing fucking people out there and you're really missing out on an amazing love, an amazing partner by just being shallow and keeping a, a preference when there's some really, really amazing people out there. So I fucked up with Brad and I fucked up with Carlos billions of times because I'm waiting, 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 waiting for someone who looks like me to treat me the way Brad and Carlos did. But that never happened. <laughs> but, um, and there is this time when I actually met two future doctors. These guys are probably doing well for themselves right now. But this is back when I was in my early 20s. I'll bring that on like my frontal lobe not being completely developed. <laughs> I'm going to blame it on that because these two stories, I was like 21, 22, young girl. And they were too. They were like 22, 23. Because this one guy, um, I was like 22. He was 24. He was in medical school. I'm sure he's an amazing doctor now. But at the time... He, uh, what is he? he's Japanese, Japanese and black. And he was nice. He was respectful. But being a young girl, you think you got time and you can just put him to the side and talk to someone else. He was telling me that um, he might not be available that much for the next couple of weeks because he has like these tests he has to take. So he can't really be like uh, distracted. And I was like, okay. But then a week went by of me not hearing from him at all. Not a, hey, how you doing? How are things? Just checking in. So I was just done with him. I kind of just threw him to the side. And he did reach out like once or twice. And I just kind of ignored him. So I just, I didn't wait for him. I just went on with my life doing absolutely nothing. Well, girl, I could be with a whole doctor right now. <laughs> I could be the doctor, okay? I don't have to wait for a doctor. I could be a doctor. I can just go to school, go back to school. It's going to take a long ass fucking time. But if that's what I wanted to do, I could be the doctor. So anyway, that actually happened a couple of times where I met another future doctor, which he probably is a doctor now. He wasn't African-American, but he was black. So I don't know if he was like... He wasn't African-American. I don't know what he was, but he wasn't from the U.S. His family wasn't. So um, we were talking. I think we met on MySpace back in my early 20s. And he mentioned that he we could go out somewhere. And he was going to come over and get me. But he was studying. And he said when he was done studying, he would come. So he texted me. And he said, okay, um, I'm done studying. I'll be there in 15 minutes. 
Back in my young days, I used to be a stickler with time. So my little 22 year old self was like, okay, he said 15 minutes. If he's not here in 15 minutes, I'm not going. So he's like, okay, I'll be there in 15 minutes. I'm not far from you. And he came, but it wasn't 15 minutes. He came three minutes late. So he came in 18 minutes and he started to knock at the door. And I was like, no, it's been 15 minutes. It's now 18 minutes. I'm not going to open the door. So this medical school, probably a whole doctor right now, man, is knocking on my door. And I'm like, he's three minutes late. He should have let me know he was going to be late. And I just let him knock and I called another guy up. And I'm on the phone with the other guy while the uh, med school guy is knocking on my door. And I just let him knock until he left. And then he left and he texted me saying, hey, I came by, I guess you were gone. Uh, maybe I'll see you some other time. And he tried to keep in touch. He would reach out here and there, you know, happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, happy new year. I would never respond. So, um, yeah, you live and you learn. That's why I'm glad these videos are out here because um, it's not only helping me to like in a therapeutic way to get it out, but also helping you and other people who might think the way I did back when I was younger. It'll help you now because now you have like a cheat sheet <laughs> with all of these different um, videos. Like, yeah, let me learn from that and not make that mistake that Nettie did. So yeah, I hope I'm helping. Just look at all these videos I ever told you that I've done and use as a blueprint of what not to do with your fucking life. <laughs> and you will be so happy, okay? But that's all. But yeah, if I do start dating again, I'm definitely gonna open the options up. I'm not gonna be just stuck just in this box of only looking at people who look like me. I'm going to like who likes me unapologetic. Um, yeah, unapologetic. Don't listen to me unapologetically. <laughs> I need a whole speech therapist, okay? I'm pretty sure I have dyslexia and a speech impediment, okay? So I need to start reading more and I need to bust out the thesaurus, okay? I'm making my speech therapist appointment next week. No, I'm not. I should, though. I should. <laughs> but that's all. I'm Nettie. Nettie, that's me. Please like, thumbs up, and subscribe if you would like. Talk to you guys later. Bye.